in a world where laughter was king. Uh, no in a world, Jack. What do you mean, no in a world? It's not that kind of movie. Oh? Okay. In a land that... No in a land either. In a time... Nah, I don't think so. In a land before time... It's about a comedian, Jack. One man... No... When your life is no longer your own... What, what does that mean? When everything you know is wrong... That's wrong. In an outpost... No... On the edge of space... There's no space... A girl... No... Two girls... No... Now... No... More than ever... Stop it... A renegade cop... Ugh, I hate you... A robot renegade cop... You're fired... You're fired... No, you're actually fired. I'm fired. Get out of the booth, Jack. No, I like it in here. the world still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it so. Kyrie, the earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So, whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Port. And this means I'm going to have to do more editing. Bedroom voice. Yep. Unplug, plug back in. Thank you, everybody that's buzzing me along the wall. Those lines, alien sounding. Yes. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. Okay. <laughs> Are we back up and running? Shall I, shall I start this over again? This is why I didn't want uh, Robbie Davidson in the first segment. Okay. Let's start this over, shall we? Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently winning the war with the mainstream scientific community. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is dusting off his Apple TV in preparation for November 15th. The day behind the curve is released on iTunes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide check it out at enclosedworld.com or just google flat earth clues if you can't find it you're not very good at the internet for those of you listening to this on youtube and you want to hear the show live as it happens please go to truth frequency radio for the latest schedule currently the show is on tuesday nights at 7 pacific 10 eastern and yes caroline if it is not october 30th 2018 then you are listening to a rerun 
Quote of the day from the peanut gallery goes exactly like this. The history of PR is a history of a battle for what is reality and how people will see it and understand reality. Who said that? That was Stuart Ewan. The Mark Sargent 2018 Flat Earth Challenge is in effect. This is my personal declaration of war from Flat Earth against mainstream science. I, Mark Sargent, hereby put forth a challenge to any university, foreign or domestic, to loan me a NASA-approved self-contained spacesuit, put me in a vacuum chamber, and pull the switch. For more information on this, please check out Flat Earth Clues number 13, The Lost Nail. Announcements. We've got a few of those. Uh, first off, we, we are going to have a guest for the show, and it's going to be Robbie Davidson from the YouTube channel Celebrate Truth. Or you may know him from the guy that has organized the first Flat Earth conferences in the United States and Canada in 500 years, which is no small feat. Anyway, he's going to be coming on during segment two. Uh, we're going to be talking about the conference. He's going to just blow the doors off of you. And then maybe in segment three, we'll take some callers for him. We're going to take some callers in, in segment one right now as well. So you can call in. The number is 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. Or if you're in the UK, whatever country code, plus 44203-393-2871. Or if you want to call and just listen and not have me pick you up, that number is 605-472-9131. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the other announcements. Sorry. Let me get back to the other announcements. Uh, what we mentioned earlier, the BehindTheCurveFilm.com. Go to it, and there is a big button right in the center, and you can pre-order a copy. The, copy, the, the movie will be released on November 15th. That is the same day as the conference. So the conference opens on the 15th. The movie gets released on the 15th officially to everywhere. I mean, it's in the film festivals right now and doing very well. Uh, but if you want to order a copy through iTunes, there you go. It's right there. Just go to BehindTheCurveFilm.com and click on the button and there you go. I am ordering <laughs> probably because it's going to be a Christmas gift. Uh, I'll, let's expand on this a little bit. It's going to be a Christmas gift for just about everybody in my family, whether or not they believe or not. No, I'm not getting a copy to my sister. I've got something special planned for her. Uh, but everybody else, yeah, my cousins, my uncles, uncles and aunts, distant cousins, they are all going to get a copy of this. Uh, why am I buying so many? Uh, because most of the people that I am dealing with are either on the fence or they need to know more about it. Is Behind the Curve a recruiting tool? Yes, it is. Is it a victory lap movie? No, it is not. Remember, it was made in 2017 and Flat Earth is not nearly. I mean, remember, we're coming to the end of 2018 and we're just doing a wonderful job now. So if you if you if if any of you buy it, in fact, you want know buy it for to be uh, use it as a recruiting tool for your friends and family, because that's what it is. I, I have learned this from a absolute experience in Toronto and Hot Springs, Arkansas and Bellingham, Washington. Uh, the three groups that I was in, they all did the same thing. And that is the movie just flat smacked the hell out of everybody who was in that audience. Uh, it didn't do much for the Flat Earth members. No, if you're a Flat Earth hardcore member, you're not going to be watching this a lot. You're, but put it on, you know, if, if, and then leave the room. Because, you, yeah, every time you see Scott Kelly on the screen, you're just going to want to punch something. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Peanut Gallery says, will it ever come out on DVD? I would imagine so. And even if it doesn't, there are conversion measures now where you could probably burn it to your own DVD if you wanted to. Uh, but, yeah, I'm sure it'll come out on DVD for those who need it on DVD. It's the first thing it's going to do, memory, because they don't want to miss the Christmas season, is going to be coming out November 15th because if you know anything about releasing for the Christmas season, you got to have it out by Thanksgiving. It has to be out. So hopefully you know, they'll, they'll have everything done by then. Other announcements real quick before I pick up a couple phone calls. One, I'm going to pick up Texas and I'm going to pick up New York probably before the break because we still got plenty of time uh, the other thing was the billboard okay so the conference is coming up a week for i am leaving here a week from uh next tuesday so two weeks from today actually and i will be coming in and staying i think till sunday and there'll be a lot of people there if you guys haven't gotten your tickets yet or you haven't gotten your streaming Please go to fe2018.com. It's in Denver, Colorado. It is going to be the 
premier event of the year. And there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of surprises, massive amounts of uh, anyone who's anyone is going to be there at this thing. So do not miss it. Uh, I'm going to be making, I'm going to be shaking as many hands as I can on the first day and meeting as many people as I can on the first day. And uh, on the second day, I'm opening, uh, doing a QA. and a That's the beginning event. And then I'm going to do a panel in the afternoon and then hosting with Patricia Steer the Flat Earth Video Awards show. That's uh, the, the end of the second night. It, check out the full schedule. You, you, the, the schedule's really, really deep. I'm not going to rattle it off right now. Maybe I'll rattle off next week. You know what? That's a great idea. Because next week, my guest is going to be Mark from New York, who I'm going to be picking up uh, on the phone here shortly. The Billboard event is on Wednesday. So the conference starts on Thursday. The Billboard event is on Wednesday. And it, if you want to know more about that, keep going to the FE podcast for last minute instructions because that's everybody's basically going to meet, I think, at the hotel and then drive a whole bunch of cars over to the Billboard. Billboard's already up. It is uh, uh, Google Flat Earth Clues. I, I had nothing to do with it. D-I-T-R-H had everything to do with it. And I don't think he was doing it to be nice to me as much as he knew that it was catchy and easy to remember if you're driving by at a high rate of speed. But still, I appreciate it very, very much. And the last announcement before I start picking up phone calls is tomorrow I'm going to be with Patricia Steer on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Tomorrow is, as you know, Halloween, so it is going to be the flat Halloween show, which we haven't done in a while, and Patricia and I will both be in costume. My costume, of course, is going to be the same thing I'm going to wear at the conference, and Patricia's costume is going to be very special. I had a preview of it before it was on her. It's going to be spectacular. You're not going to want to miss this show. So there you go. And let me check the comment sections real quick. All right, everybody's good there. And yes, multiple, and I'm sorry, I, I make a shout out to the guy, the people out at Humana Story in San Diego. And that is, you know, behind the curve, send it to our enemies. You know, buy, buy some digital copies and send it, or the DVD copies if they come out, and send it to uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and Joe Rogan and Brian Cox and every astronaut, you know, like, like or ex astronaut like Scott Kelly or Tim Peak or Terry Verts or Chris Hatfield, uh, Michio Kaku you can kind of leave him off. He hasn't been giving us much grief, but definitely Bill Nye the Science Guy. So all those people send send them copies of this thing so they can watch it. Uh, let's see what Owen oh, Peanut Gallery sees. Uh, Peanut Gallery says, "Are you going to do the Halloween thing as Shrek?" It's funny. Now this is why we don't talk more than we already do. All right. On that note, let's pick up a couple calls, shall we? Let's pick up 254 area code. Hey, where are you? What are we talking about? Hey, Mark. I, you got to totally go with Shrek. <laughs> the what? You got to totally go with Shrek. That'd be funny. No, no, I'm not going to Shrek. No, that's a bad <laughs> idea. Because every day, apparently, I'm Shrek. So, uh, but, you know, I feel bad because I do wear a lot of green People say that I, I look better in, in greens and blue greens and teals and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, my fault. What well, that's am I, why what? you wear it. It's a good color for you. Right. Right. Yeah. The monsterism that comes later. So uh, what's going on? No. <laughs> well, I was. I had to tell you because, you know, I, I'm i still a movie buff. I don't like watch new movies, but I like to go back and watch old movies and I can't even remember which one it was, because it was Lethal Weapon. I think it was the second one. Somewhere in the middle, they're standing on a beach. And it's like a normal camera shot. Yet, you know how the GoPro GoPro changes from the Red Bull jump to like a flat minute super curve? Well, they're standing on the beach, and it's showing the ocean super curved like that in the background. And I'm like... What the heck was I was like that? There's no That's, way it was like that when we watched it back in the day. I don't know if it's no. been like I mean, the, ca- camera lenses, you know, are naturally curved, so I don't know what lens they were using. And l- the peephole lens wasn't invented by GoPro. They just made it digital. That's all they did. Remember, because right. remember, don't, pe- this pe- was supposed to be looking like normal, though. Hmm. I don't think they were like somebody looking at them from like 
a spying or you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, Hollywood. Shot the movie. Hollywood uses a lot of different lenses, and you can do just about anything you it, want with the expensive stuff. Well, Again, I know, I know that, but it was super exaggerated, and I just wanted to tell you about it because right, I right. wish I could. It, I wish it's, I knew exactly the time and everything when it was in there, but somebody needs to. Do, that's something that needs to be thrown in a clip of indoctrination. That's interesting. <laughs> that is fine. That's interesting. I mean, you don't need to do it I much. I never in, noticed it. In a movie like Lethal Weapon, all you have to do is make sure there's globes and offices. And... Oh, yeah, and every office in that freaking movie has yeah. a globe. Oh, what kills me is like the the uh, the detective's offices. You know, you know, veteran police force. It's like, why would you have a globe sitting on top of that filing cabinet? Yeah. But we see it so now, often. Are you, are, you, are you into geography? <laughs> right. Right. It's like, yeah, because you're going to be leaving Chicago or New York. It's like Indiana Jones. Yes, of course. He's going to have a globe. But no, nobody else. No, not a chance. No. 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 Anyway, no. I just wanted to tell you about that little clip. And I have a, a plethora of things I could talk about, but it would bore you. Well, you, I, know. you can bring up one if you want. That's OK. <laughs> what, what do you want? Well, I'll give you some. You call in quite a bit. What What do you got? Uh, somebody, I can't remember who posted it the other day, brought to my attention that this Chris Haskell, are you familiar with him? Chris, Chris Haskell or Chris Hatfield, the astronaut? Haskell. Haskell. Has Haskell. No, he's a dude that lives in, he lives in Arizona. He got arrested for terrorism for posting signs about chemtrails. And he's, he's being booked for like. I don't, know how I don't think I don't think he just got nailed for posting signs about camp trails. Usually there's oh, a couple well, other this, couple other you things. You can go look at it to you, for yourself. I mean, it, giving the he was giving the signs away to other people. And they well, were putting I'm, them I'm up. sure he was. Somebody, somebody uh, put a sign up with some white powder on it. And they said that was a, like maybe a bomb. They did because they said they couldn't identify this substance or something blah 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 mm. short story they're saying it was him because it was his sign anyway so yeah he's, it's, he's they're throwing the book at him for real and I'm like oh my gosh that's insanity mm. I, I don't you know should look him up his name's Chris Askell alright it's interesting alright I'll look anybody him up anybody out there you know I don't it's it's crazy that's just one thing I mean you know no alright well, give no, that's shout good out you uh Mar you know Maryland spirit level yes she does she's good awesome. work I'm she does good it. work she's I'm the one that she was, she's, putting out. she's been she's been giving the school board a lot of of hell recently yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes and they uh, they're they're finding out that she's not willing to back down and they're sending her letters now good Good for her. I, again, I love the activism. I mean, it, it's. I do too. It's inspiring. It's everywhere. the uh, The UK stuff is wrapping up. As a matter of fact, the uh, John Smith Globe Lie UK tour is wrapping up this Saturday, I believe, the third. And they've been on the road. What I think it's going to be a total of ninety days before it's over. I think. Just and going around, it's wanna, all, just, like going to all these towns. Like I think it was like fifty towns, and and getting out and from dusk till dawn and just preaching the word. I thought it was, I brought a tear to my eye. What's the, what's the channel name? I'm not sure. I'm uh, John, 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 John Smith globe lie. Or if you want the updates on a regular basis, go to Roxanne Glenn, the globe denier. Roxanne. You can, you can just look up Roxanne Roxanne. Glenn. I think there's only one of her out there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, also I want to shout out, you know, you, you do such a good job, you know, putting people's meetups on your channel, which is great. Aww. Dallas is close to me. You just did that Dallas one today. I, I had to do that uh, one three three times because they changed the venue and then I screwed up the suite number. So the one that's up there now, that was the third <laughs> the third try. So anyone that was getting alerts, it's like, why does Mark keep posting this Dallas thing? Yeah, that's why. <laughs> so sorry. Well, guys. I just got the one alert for some reason, so oh well. No problem here. That's fine then. <laughs> But I, I might be able to make that one. I'm going to try to because, you know, that's only like maybe four and a half hours for me walk the Hakashi, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, try so try I'm to make try. it. And I hear it's I hear it's going to be good. I mean, they changed the venue to a big a bigger place, and uh, it's I, I, I hear good things. I, I I you know I can only go to about like five percent of these meetups, but uh, right it, right. But well, I'm going to try to get to that one because it's both. I missed Patricia's because I didn't get the email. <laughs> well, it happens. It happens. Well, though my anyway, email wasn't working. I gotta I gotta run because I gotta pick up a couple people. Yeah, I know. Bring on Robbie. Better have a great evening and right. really want to be on here soon. Tell him that Shannon said hi. Okay, I will. All right, y'all have a blessed evening. All right, you too. Bye bye. All right, let's pick up. Uh, I might kill two birds with one stone here. Let's try this out. Uh, Eight four five area code. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. There you go. I need to drink a lot. Vagabond shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the like stray. Yeah. Uh, through, uh, uh, too funny. Good evening, evening, sir. Hey, what's going on? Not much. How you doing? Good. Good. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna blend this a little bit. You ready? I'm gonna bring sure. on. I'm pretty sure I know who this is. I I've got two New Yorks back to back next to each other in the call order. So I'm gonna bring in this other New York one. You might know him. You ready? Maybe. I think you will. Nine one four. Are you there? I certainly am, Mark, and I have two Marks on the same line as me. <laughs> hey, Chris. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I my Sorry, uh, Shana Honey. So what's uh, what what's what's going on? Okay, so let me ask you guys real quick. I'm gonna I'm just gonna take you guys to the break since I got two of you. The um, so okay. we got five minutes. The uh, so Mark. Is going to be going to Behind the Curve in New York City at the film festival that's coming up on the, I think that's the 10th? The 10th, correct. That's 10th. That's perfect. Uh, Chris, Chris, are you? my date is. I'm sorry, what? Guess who my date is. Who's your date? That's right. You're talking to him, Chris. (laughs) Oh, oh, you guys are going together. (laughs) Yes, that's absolutely Uh, correct. I can't wait. I, yeah, I, I called him right away. I was like, you got to go. You got to go to this movie. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. And, well, I'll give you guys a little inside track because I don't think the producers are listening to this show. Uh, that is, there is going to be a Q&A after the show. And so far, only the direct and the director cool. is going to be there. And cool. so, and I know that uh, DITRH is going as well. And he's going to bring yeah. the sociology student from NYU. They're actually having dinner. Yeah. And- I think he's taking her and, and he's bringing his family, which is going to be fantastic. And so what I told him was, look, just introduce yourself to the director beforehand. And I guarantee it'll be the most interesting dialogue ever, ever, because there's going to be a bunch of flat earthers in the audience. And then I'm hoping that they will allow at least one flat earther up on stage. I'm hoping. And if they allow more, even better. But I think they'll only have chairs for one or two. So be gotcha. ready, because the Q&As that I have done. All the way that I have been to so far, uh, they all start the same way. I mean, it's a hundred minutes. And again, you guys are going to look at the movie and go like, Oh God. But at the end, you're going to say, you're going to see all these questions, all these hands going up and you're going to understand why I I'm backing <laughs> them because people just, you, you have them engaged for a hundred minutes. You flat smacked them. And now they've got, as you know, tons of questions because they couldn't ask them during the movie. Right. Right. That's awesome. Uh, cool. we'll, we'll definitely put uh, David up front there. We'll get him uh, out there to talk to them. Yeah, he's, and, and actually, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, he asked, and I and I asked the producer, and they said, well, in fact, they just let me know this afternoon. They said we don't. The festival is the one that's to decide. But I guarantee, if David introduces himself to the festival person, that it'd be like, oh yeah, come on up. I mean, he's got a bit part in the movie, of course, but uh, I, I think yeah, be, absolutely, sure. sure. I think it'd be awesome. And uh, feel free to, by the way, to chime in. You know, if you're sitting next to people, don't don't be shy. I mean, all these people that are in the audience, they have questions. Lots of them. Oh, yeah. I'll talk to people. Hey, I played an extra in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, Mark, Zulu One, you're definitely, I believe you're in there. Absolutely. You're, you're somewhere in there. 
couple scenes from what I've seen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You guys. Yeah. I don't know. It's great. You guys will get a kick out of it because you'll you because you've been in this thing long enough. You recognize so many people. I mean, you're looking the the, mm-hmm. yeah. the collage. It's like, yep, no him, no him, no him, no her, no you know, oh, on and on. Yeah. Uh, but I, I yeah. am going to be a little curious because this is an East Coast audience. This isn't Midwest. This isn't California. This isn't Canada. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to see what sort of, you know, cause you'll lose a few people. I, I guarantee it. You're going to have people in New York city be like, you know, 40 minutes in, they'll be like, yeah, I'm out of here. You're going to lose a few. <laughs> yeah. I don't doubt it. Yeah. yeah but, I'm sure. But that's And they awesome. won't be, they will not be shy to ask questions. They'll, they'll ask the brutal questions. I think <laughs> somebody should record it. Cause the accents are going to be priceless. <laughs> it's gonna be going off (laughs) what do you mean it's fucking round and not flat or flat (laughs) not round yeah (laughs) oh Oh, Oh, it's gonna be a blast i can't wait i'm looking forward to this so much Anyway, you'll have you'll have allies there. Do not forget, by the way, that you have a, a sociology study that's actually happening in the room. You know, where this this lovely Asian woman is going to be looking at this, going, okay, because apparently it's it's the buzz of all the sociology thing in at NYU. It's like, wait, there's somebody actually doing a, a study on this, and they think she's well, they think she's insane she for doing real it. Real nice, she was so nice, she was yeah. so nice, polite, courteous. I had a great time talking to her. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm, and Mark, uh, uh, Zulu one. I'm, I'm speaking to her on Thursday. Actually, she's an interview me, and we had a great conversation. Brief one, and uh, she well, is call she me. nice. Yeah, yeah, no, she seems great. She seems great. And, but, but that's that's what I'm saying. When, I, when you know, when we went to college, that was one of my first classes. Was a sociology class, and I was sitting in the middle of that class, saying, "What am I doing here?" <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Hey, guys. I, I this do- is required. Yeah. To do this to you, but uh, we're we're going to break. So when we come back from the break, we're going to be speaking with Robbie Davidson, and then we're probably going to be taking calls in in section three and section four. And by the way, feel free to to call in later if you want, because uh, right now I'm I can't do anything with the calls. So anyway, talk to you guys soon. Okay. Howdy, yeah, Mark. No hate, no hype, no fear. We are EFR, your protection from from deception. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. We are doing a call-in show, but first, we are going to speak with special guest Robbie Davidson. Who is Robbie Davidson? He is the current owner of YouTube channel Celebrate Truth, and he's the man responsible for the first Flat Earth conferences in North America. That includes the United States and Canada in, oh, you know, 500 years, half a millennia, really. So, uh, Robbie, are you there? I'm here, Mark. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, the timing, we're, we're getting close. Uh, in fact, this show is going to be called, I think, uh, Flat Earth Conference T-minus two weeks. 
When I, yeah, when I get done working tonight, it will be literally two weeks away. So I'm just looking at the countdown and it's ticking down pretty quickly now. So it's uh, going to come around really quickly. I I am so excited. And I know everybody in the circles that I've been talking with, we've been talking about it for months, obviously. Everybody's so jazzed because the the conference last year in Raleigh went so well. And everybody that, that came, they met fun and interesting people. And I think there was this just giant sense of community where everybody came came that I spoke with said the same thing. It's like, wow, I, I was in rooms full of people that felt the same way I did. And then when you and I, we, we were part of the Canadian conference up in Edmonds in Canada, I, I was even it was even uh, more surprising for me because everything felt like it was clicking more like a like a like a well-oiled machine. To where now, I mean, if Edmonton's any indication, I, I think Denver is going to be an amazing success. So, what uh, what what are you looking forward to most, or what do you want to what do you want to spotlight most in the Denver conference coming up? Well, I mean, the first year there when I put on Raleigh, North Carolina, the uh, slogan was 500 years in the making," and for 2018, uh, it's going to be we're taking it to the next level, and I'm definitely trying to take it to the next level on all accounts. With the conference in Denver, it's going to be quite something, uh, not just with the media attention, the excitement building up, but also I'm definitely trying to improve as I go along. I'm always learning. I'm always trying to you know, wow people even more. I've got some special surprises planned, but also just the lineup is absolutely phenomenal this year. We've got a concert with Flat Earth Man. We've got a debate with Rob Skiba and Dr. Robert Sugenis. We've got mm. the, the great Flat Earth Video Awards with uh, you and Patricia Steer. Mm. It's going to be fantastic. And yeah. uh, I think there's a lot of eyeballs that are going to be on it this year. And we've got now to a phase where people are saying, wait a minute, something must be going on a little bit more than just let's just go and laugh and mock at this. Something has to be going on. This is not going away. It's getting bigger. They're meeting in larger facilities and venues. Uh, The meetups are increasing in frequency. Something's happening. So I think it's going to be an incredible year. Uh, as far as this journey, and I'm yeah. really looking, uh, you know, looking forward to it. Canada was absolutely amazing. It was great to be able to host that in my home city, and I think Denver, Colorado, just with the uh, numbers of the Flat Earth community that yeah. are represented there, as well yeah. as just the attention overall, I think it's going to be a fantastic time. So I'm, I'm incredibly excited. Yeah, it, Denver. It, funny you mentioned that because I was, you know, spent lived in Boulder for Colorado, which is just up the road from Denver for 20 years, uh, and the Flat Earth Clues was born in Boulder, Colorado. Most people don't know that. I, I wrote it when I was living up there and and doing my thing. And you know, Bob uh, from Globusters is is down in Denver, and ODD is down in Denver. And there's a whole the community in Colorado is quite big. They were one of the first groups to do regular meetups mm-hmm. up in up in Fort Collins. And I they flew me in for a, a meetup down in Colorado Springs earlier in the year. And it's it's an amazing community, and the the location's great because now you know on the East Coast, you know Raleigh's great, but now we'll have people driving in from the West Coast. I mean, there's there's a reason why Denver is technically the backup capital of the world. Most people don't know that. If uh, if the if the United States gets hit, right, Washington D.C. goes down, Denver is the new capital, and so it's it's a fun fun place. Uh, I I'm hoping, cross my fingers, you know, because up at that altitude, weather can be anything but i'm i'm very very excited uh and what you were mentioning was the, the there's going to be more eyes on it because last year you knew this people the media didn't quite know what to make of it they mm-hmm. so they did commit because like well i mean there were people that sent probes like like even the the abc news piece they sent a probe out first just to make sure that it was le- a legit thing mm-hmm. and then they then it's like okay you got to get a team in here now 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 because you know we, we you know this is actually a happening thing so now they see us coming and the timing couldn't be better you have bob nodell who did the um, the interview with cbs the, the local thing and then all the other affiliates picked that up and then um, uh, behind the curve, which you were in, uh, was is going to be. You probably saw the announcement, or mm-hmm. maybe you haven't seen it. It is going to be uh, the pre-orders that it's going to be starting to it released. I think it's going to release on the fifteenth. So that that's not going to be. I don't think that's an accident by any stretch. <laughs> Robbie's microphone. Robbie, you you kicked something loose when you were rattling around there. This that was Robbie Davidson, by the way, from Celebrate Truth, and hopefully we can get him back on here in a second. 
his picture is still up on my screen, which means he can still he's still connected in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but that's okay. Let's go to the chat board and make sure that uh, uh, one. Uh, let me answer a quick thing from Caroline out in Arizona. Uh, Suzette, Suzanne, Suzette, Dan. Oh, asking the music that opened that segment. That was, if I'm not mistaken, that's a techno song from the 1990s called Absurd by a band called Fluke. Robbie, are you there now? I think I hear some clicking. Testing, testing. There you are. You're back. All right. <laughs> that's okay. It happens to the best of us. I don't I know actually... what's going on there, but uh, yeah, I just kind of clicked out and I'm not sure no, what happened. No. It, are you kidding? I once talked for before I had a uh, peanut gallery helping me out to make sure that I was on. I once spoke for nine minutes and I wasn't even talking to anybody. My mic was my mic was muted. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the first time that's happened actually in a uh, in an interview setting. But uh, no, no, it's yeah, okay. you, you were mentioning that yeah, people are you know came out they didn't know what to think the first year, and now like I said, because of the nature of things, people are getting now to the next level, and they're saying let's just start reporting on this and taking it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 all the, I can't even imagine how many people are going to show up now because the media likes as much as I like new things. They also like weird routines. And now it's like, oh yeah, you, you know, because the, the rumors would have swirled inside the media, uh, media world, which was, uh, oh dude, if you get the chance, you've got to go to the flat earth conference. And I, I think producers are going to be called everywhere where it's like, oh, we, we got to get in here and, and do this. Um, there was something I was going to mention, and there's a couple things we should probably talk about, and I don't know if you can give it away. I, one of them is obvious, and we'll kind of dance around that one. But the other one is, do, you, do we want to talk about anything regarding rockets, or is that still kind of te- tentative at this point? Rockets. Oh, boy. Robbie's gone again. <laughs> as soon as I ask a question. Testing, testing. There you go. He's he's back. It is like Weird. <laughs> Very strange. Very which, strange. Uh, which is it? Is it a? Um, you know, I don't. I don't want to do tech support on the air. But is it a, uh, a a microphone jack issue, or is there something else it's, going on? It's a very strange issue because it's pulling up like two different mics on another mic, and while I set it as the default, it uh, wants to set back to the other one by default. Oh right. Yeah. I, I, I think I, I got it now. Now I have it as the default. So you should hear me. We shouldn't lose each other. Yeah, yeah. Now, fa- now, now, now really it sounds like, are you, on a, are you on a headset now? Yeah, I am. Yes. That, this is yeah. the original one that kind of like flaked out on me, but I'm really sorry. Like I said, this oh, is no, never- no, 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 no. Please. You can, if you ever heard my show. It's, no, it's all it's, good. I, I know how frustrating it can be, but uh, uh, to mention about, uh, I think it was Rockets. Mad Mike. He's yeah. definitely planning on um, coming to the conference. I think that was the last time I was able to speak with him last uh, week. And uh, yeah, it's looking good. We're in ongoing discussion. It looks like he's probably going to be coming by, which is uh, which is awesome. I don't know too much more to say on that. We're definitely going to be talking a little bit more. But uh, is it possible that the uh, the rocket, the famed rocket in question of 2018, actually may make an appearance as well? There's a very good likelihood that yes. And uh, as far as showcasing it, you know, with the conference, I was able to get vehicle oh. you know, in, but not rockets. So I don't think we'll be able to get the rocket in the conference. Oh, that's But it bad. might be outside. It might be placed outside somewhere. We're still working the logistics on that, but it'll be interesting. And I think it'll be important for people to understand that when he did the rocket launch, it had nothing to do with proving the shape of the earth. It was to, to set a, a world record. Uh, which he did, and he survived, which is fantastic. He does have plans in the future to possibly go a lot higher than to be able to detect curvature. But I think it's important for the media, and definitely if he is there, to set the record straight that it had nothing to do with, you know, uh, oh, discovering. Oh, it, it was, and and he's been actually pretty good of, with interviews as of late. And, you know, it was it was supposed to be for flat Earth awareness. Sure. Uh, you know, where he approached the flat Earth community, and and uh, we we helped him fund his final rocket project and but you know in exchange giant flat earth sticker but but really it was it was uh kind of symbiotic in a way because the media it's one thing you look daredevils are dare, daredevils and that happens from time to time and we you know we haven't seen a serious devil daredevil really since evil Knievel in the states but having a daredevil tied to flat earth oh that's just too good to pass up 
And he's the real deal. And he's the real deal. I mean, talking to him for a couple of hours and just hearing his history and the stunts that he's been involved with and the racing. And he's an extraordinary man. He really is. And I think he's definitely got a very intriguing story and he's definitely getting attention. Sometimes it's uh, attention that might be go the other way. And that's what we can do is educating people and letting people know that, yes, he's a flat earther and launching rockets in the past had nothing to do with trying to figure out if it's a ball or not. Right. Um, it just had to do with setting more and, records and, because he set quite a few records in the life of a stuntman and, and a daredevil uh, what what and everybody knows that too i mean it was like look you, you go up a couple thousand feet of course i mean there's the mountains next to him were higher than a couple thousand feet the media so. didn't the media didn't they ran with the fact that he's trying to prove the nature uh. of the earth but again that's the media for you and sometimes they just run with the story because they they think it's a great headline it's funny it captures the attention and uh, i think over time that will get dispelled for sure i think so too and it, the timing again was pretty good because, uh, as you know, he did the interview on Tosh.0 oh, and they, they, Tosh.0 oh sat on that. Comedy Central sat on that interview for a while and then it was released just recently and it's, it's scoring pretty well. I got to tell you, it wasn't a bad interview. I mean, Tosh is an excellent interviewer, uh, but Mad Mike did pretty well. Did he make many friends in the female community? Probably not as much as he could have, but at the same time, it was a solid interview. So I was like, all right. We'll we'll take it, and it'll it's a it's a nice little jump off point for when he shows up at the conference. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, be a beautiful time. The timing is great. This is going to yeah. be the time where he gets to meet you know many people in the flat earth community, and up until then he really hasn't met uh, many. So I think it's going to be a nice opportunity to really get to know Mike, and he gets to know the community. And I had a wonderful conversation with him as well as Rick Hummer, and uh, we were able to talk about a lot of different topics and get to know him better. And unfortunately, it's taken this long to reach out. And I think I tried in the past, but I had I had apologized to him and I said, you know, I'm really sorry that I didn't try hard enough. But uh, he was a hard person to locate. But I felt well, he, been- th- yeah. Let me let me chime in on that. He was a very hard person to locate. Uh, uh, quite a few people contacted me saying uh, producers saying like, Cat, do you know how to get a hold of Mad Mike? And I had to forward him off to someone who we will not mention right now. Uh, someone, the only guy that I knew that had his number at the time because he was he didn't make it really public. Sure. And which, which is why I always encourage people. It's like, look, you want to know how how to get contacted by the media. You got to you got to make yourself available. You sure. have to. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just sorry. You can't play coy. You can't use an alias. You got to put your real phone number out there and you got to answer the phone and call them back if they want, because they will reach out to you. Yeah, and that's uh, one of the big reasons why, I mean, you've been in the forefront and, and in front of so many things is because you're so accessible. I mean, your phone number is on the, you know, on your YouTube. It's on the end of your videos. I mean, you're the easiest person to get a hold of in Flat Earth. And people wonder, it's like, well, how come Mark's in that interview? Or how come he's there and there? Because yeah. the media love it. They can get a hold of you. So if you ever want to, yeah. you know, get in front of the media, just start giving your information. Make it easy to access and they will actually come because they're oh, definitely yeah, yeah. looking more you, and more you, this you knew the story where, I mean, it was in the documentary where, it's, I mean, I, I not making this up. I couldn't make this up. And that was the first people that interviewed me weren't even looking for me. They were looking for Matt because Matt was almost impossible to find. Sure. And they, and they were saying, was like, Hey, do you know how to go with Matt Boylan? And my phone number was out there because I was an idiot. And I was like, Oh yeah, here's my, I, I put it in the clues. Oh my Lord. And you'd be amazed how many people call me up after that first 20 minutes. And they, and I can hear myself in the background when they leave a message. And it's like, oh, man, I called you. you. I called you. I remember way back. I mean, (laughs) you know, I called you. I mean, I jumped. That was how I met the Controversy 7. When I saw his phone number and I realized he was in the same city as me, I mean, I didn't email him. I didn't text him. You know, I called him and I got him right on the phone. To me, to be able to have that kind of interaction just to get someone on the phone and they're right there. They just become real. And I mean, you were very instrumental in the early days. I actually just did an interview an hour ago on Baratos Radio with Mel. And I explained that, uh, you know, after my initial video, instantly I came across Flat Earth Clues. And I think for a lot of people, you, you were able to start to piece it together and show the connecting the dots and just the mysteries behind what's going on in Antarctica and other facets. So and then, again, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. But it, I, I had nothing to do. By the way, anyone's listening out there. I had nothing to do with everybody running to the beaches with their cameras. That was the weird one. Or I said, do your own research. It's like, let's go to the beach. <laughs> yeah. Like, Let's start yeah. looking at boats. It's like, wow, I, I didn't think of that. That's that's brilliant. <laughs> that's really, yeah. really good. Well, it's um, something to watch. It's something to watch from, you know, early, you know, 2013, 2014 to see where it's at now. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just incredible. And it's just snowballing. It's just increasing. I said, I've never seen any other topic community no. grow at the level this is growing. And to captivate the world's attention, the media, we have international media coming in from all 
different countries. Right. Uh, I would say that it's double, if not triple, the attention that Raleigh and Raleigh was overwhelming. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, a lot of people were floored at how much media was there. This is at a whole new level. Good thing right. I, I made the the slogan for this year, taking it to the next level, because even with the media and the attention with documentary crews, and even with the special, you know, uh, announcement I kind of made on Facebook, right. uh, mentioning that there's someone of very large stature coming to the conference, I think it's only going to get bigger. Which yeah, which we should talk about in one second because we got ten minutes to the break. By the way, can you can you stay to the next segment? Uh, sure can. Okay, yeah. perfect. Because I I would love to take some calls. Anyone that's still on the call line, and I, I see you lining up there. If you have calls for Robbie, uh, questions about the conference, or if you just want to talk about whatever Robbie. Real quick, checking. real quick though, we only have about twenty three VIP tickets left, and then we are sold out of VIPs. So just letting okay. you know for anyone that's listening that still wants to grab a VIP ticket, we still got lots of general admission, but the VIP all access tickets are almost out. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, very good to hear. Uh, something. I, well, let's let's talk about the media real quick because yeah, as you said, like last year, I I didn't know. You know, I had done a bunch of interviews before then, but I missed almost everybody's segments, and I'm going to have to really, really, you know, bite down and, and pick the segments I'm going to watch this time, because last year, yeah, I did 14 interviews in two days. This year, I would imagine it's going to be, it's going to be brutal, because there's going to be, luckily, I'm coming early, I'm staying late, but let, let's get into uh, the, the big mystery question. I know you can't give it away, because you're sworn to secrecy, but... <laughs> It's I, funny. I, it's funny that I know something that nobody else knows. You, like, do. Wife. you do. I do. It's, it's killing. Feeling. By the way, it the, is the, killing the inter, me. It's killing the inter, me. Well, I the can't. inner circles are dying because they're because they are going to die when they find out. They're going to like freak out. I had to do a double take. I had to investigate it, and it's the real deal. And it's massive, and it's something that no one expects. And it's it's getting bigger by the day. They're adding okay, more to their so, entourage. So let's let's talk about it. Uh, you know, as you know, <laughs> the, there's some people that that you and I have talked about privately over things. You know, the invitations yes, have been correct. set out to certain correct. celebrities who or may or may not come as a matter of fact let's let's bring up one which i can say on the air just so you know okay. uh which again perfect timing would have been the uh the jared uh mm -hmm. the jared yaw piece that came out he yeah. is just so you know i because you said oh give him my phone number to uh, <laughs> to people if, if they have to he is actually 80 percent sure that he's coming Good. to this awesome and yeah, uh to to, to reason, well for various reasons uh but I, th I think it'd be great just to let you know that that's that's probably going to happen uh yeah. i put feel this out to other people but the big one the big big secret you're sitting on that's <laughs> killing me and killing everybody <laughs> is so we've got a, a, we, would you say without a shadow of a doubt we're, we're talking an a-lister here that's the, that no one's going to you're not going to have anyone walk up and say i have no idea who you are Oh no, people are definitely going to know, and I would. I, I'm not giving any clues as far as all anything. Right, I would right. just say, I would say it's massive, and it's the interesting thing about it. There's no, there's no breadcrumbs. There's no. Um, point that people could figure it out because it's like a video was done someone they're did not, an interview they're not telegraphing they're, in any way that's the I, I mean i was talking to patricia steer actually just a, a while ago and i said the interesting thing about this it's no one that you would think like it would be like oh what about bob what about this what about it's just someone brand new that when it comes out it's going to make waves and it's going to make waves in a big big way uh and, and I, what i love about it is that they're coming because they've been looking into it they really want to take it all in and learn and they want to continue on after the conference so there's going to be other stuff happening after the conference and it's it's going to make waves for sure it's going to and, it's going to be of course, big, big. They, they know full well that the media is there with a freaking microscope oh yeah and these these people are so is they're coming out put it away it's, it's probably the coming out moment wow That's what I would say. I, so they it's, it, it, it's it, like if not, you're gonna if you're gonna come out if you're gonna come out you might as well do it in style at the flat earth international true. conference yeah yeah if you're gonna do it you're not let's not do it kyrie irving style where you no. do it at the all-star game although yep. that's pretty big let's let's do it at the actual conference and I, by the way kyrie if anyone forwards this is kyrie love to have you there although i know that you know the season's kicking off and you're gonna have to you know well, actually it's already kicked off and you're gonna have to you know, you'd have to break away for it um, let me let me ask you this. We got six minutes of the break. I, I, I do want to work on this a little bit, even though I'm not trying to get information out of you and That's we're not okay. analyzing this with sure. voice spectrum things where we're trying to figure out if you're if you're telling the truth. And that is, are is this particular individual or group? Are they let's play 20 questions. Are they mm -hmm. to make any announcements or are they going in cold? Where it's like nobody's gonna no, know. No, no, I can't. I can say this because I was actually just talking with their assistant yeah. uh, earlier t today, and they are planning to release it pretty much the day before or the day of. It's going to be very quickly announced. Uh, they felt 
the beginning, they didn't want a big lead up because they didn't want it to take president. They didn't want it to become the focus. So it's, I mean, while it's still going to cause, um, you know, a lot of waves and I'm sure a lot of people are, are going to, you know, hear the news and react to it. Uh, if they did it two weeks early, it would probably be a lot no more to deal with. So again, I respect what they're doing. I want them to be able to do it. That was kind of their wishes that they want to be able to release it. And I know that if I mention it to one person, that person will be dying to tell one other and oh, one yeah, other yeah, yeah. and one, and it just, it will come out. It's too, it's too big. It's just too exciting because it's not, Hey, I know someone, you know, I was at their house and they share with me, they're going to be there. This is not a bluff. I would never, ever put something up to cause excitement and sure. put my name and reputation on the line. If it wasn't true, it's confirmed and double confirmed. Um, and again, there's an, investment, not just, you know, with uh, spending time with me, but also just knowing the ins and outs of what's happening. And we're definitely going to make sure that they have the entire honorage have a very strong VIP uh, reception. And I know they're going to be treated really well. And I think it's a great thing, just like with Jared coming and kind of meeting the community. If he's coming to the conference, I mean, what greater way of meeting real, a lot of the community at the conference? I mean, the LA right. meetup was fantastic. It's amazing. But right. here it's not just Mark and Patricia. It's right. Mark and Patricia plus so many more. Oh, I mean, yeah, if you want yeah, to, yeah. If you want yeah, to get a good understanding I mean, of the community, all our differences, and we're all different. We all got different flavors. It's a beautiful way to really get a good representation of yeah. this community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I couldn't be more excited. Uh, and I hope you you know that if if they do drop this a, a day before, let's say 24, 36 hours beforehand, because mm -hmm. uh, if they fly in on a Wednesday, for mm -hmm. example, they say drop it on Tuesday. You will get so many last minute, and I'm sure you've already thought about this, yeah. so many last press things. Sure. People like press that just did like, wait, wait, so who is going where? You know, all of a sudden, you know, anyone that already made that made arrangements is, is in great shape. Anyone that hadn't made arrangements. So, yeah, the anticipation will be massive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I'm I'm excited. Can't wait. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys haven't gotten your tickets, we'll, we'll talk about this in the next segment as well. Sure. If you haven't got your tickets yet. Please get them. Uh, Fe2018.com. Uh, how many VIPs are left right now? 20... 23. 23. Those will probably go fast. Uh, well, those will be. <laughs> oh, why are you even pushing those? Because oh, you know oh, so oh, well, oh. those will absolutely vaporize. Well, it. yeah, and they've done very well, but we have a limit just because we have a dinner associated. We also have this year, we have a VIP speaker mixer reception on the Wednesday evening at 7 30. Right. And I can definitely say that this mystery guest will be there as well. So, again, that's a very exclusive thing because staff is not even coming to the VIP speaker reception. Now, the dinner, that's going to be VIP speaker and staff, you know, to say thank you at the very end. But there's a lot of other uh you know additions in there but again even if you go with the general admission you're definitely going to be able to meet everyone uh it's the type I, I say this all the time it's not like oh if you can't get an all access if you just have general admission you're not going to be able to meet someone or shake hands you're going to meet everyone there's going to be plenty of time i mean you'll be able to meet every single person trust me it will take a long time but you'll be able to meet everyone and i'm going to do my best to be able to at least <laughs> greet everyone at least once i'm going to be busy mark knows it he's seen me in canada he's seen me in raleigh but you i love don't it sleep you're I love a freaking it. Oh. wreck how can you sleep when when you're making history? I mean, when history is being made, uh, and we're I, living in such an exciting time. For me, right. it's exciting. And I'll I, tell you right now, the day before the conference, you could you could give me ten thousand dollars to sleep for three hours, and I wouldn't be able to take that ten thousand dollars away from you because. I can't sleep the night before and I'm fine yeah. because there's just so much going on and I want everything to be as best as it can be because I'm representing the speakers, the community and the world is watching. So I just want to make sure that we have, you know, a professional feel. Things are good. Uh oh, uh oh, Robbie. Oh, his microphone went and we have a minute 30, got 90 seconds to the break and Robbie's microphone. He doesn't know it yet. Uh, I'll type in the word sound. He was on a roll there for a second. Yeah. Robbie's a great guest. He and I, he and I, uh, the last time I think he and I talked together, we've done different interviews. My favorite was when I was up in Canada, up in Victoria. I spent a year there with, uh, with a flat earth, um, woman who was, I will not name her right now, but it was really, really fun. And Robbie and I did a whole show together and just, be, uh, hyping up the, the 2017 conference. And it was a lot of fun. So while Robbie fixes his microphone, let me get out the phone number again. It's 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. And I do see people in area codes 334-651-203-304-408 and so on. And we will pick up some of those when uh, we come back. And let me do the announcements again one more time, which is, oh, you know what? There was a quote from the peanut gallery I was supposed to read. 
And that was for uh, Mark in New York. Uh, the quote is, it's amazing that the amount of news that happens in the world every day always just exactly fits the newspaper. Who that? said that? Jerry Seinfeld. Awesome. Really, really great. The announcements, uh, you know, we got like 10 seconds to the break. I should just kind of mumble until then. So when we come back from the break, got Robbie Davidson, Celebrate Truth. We're talking about the conference, fe2018.com. And we are going to be taking Testing. your calls. And and yes, you're back, Robbie. Perfect timing. Great. Going to music. Back in three minutes. Radio is your number one. This is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones, obviously, under heavy, heavy, heavy Masonic <laughs> influence. <laughs> Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. We're doing a call-in show, and we have the organizer of the first Flat Earth conferences in North America in half a millennia. I'd like to have anybody else try to top that. Robbie Davidson. Robbie, are you still with us? I'm here. Hopefully we're good. Maybe I've done too many interviews today. My mic is crap. <laughs> okay. So I actually have, believe it or not, that's funny you'd mention that, you know, because I use the, the Chris Pontius super glowy mm-hmm. microphone, but I have a backup microphone sitting right below my desk just in case the day this thing dies or the USB <laughs> port. I have like backups for just about everything. And like Daniel, when I was uh, dealing with him up at the um, the film festival up in Bellingham, Washington, he was uh, he was giving me grief because I actually keep sharpies in my bag. <laughs> it's like oh, no. it's like why wouldn't I? I go. I'm not going to sign anything with a ballpoint pen. That's that's amateur hour. Why why would I do that? I also, by the way, uh, and you probably saw me do this last year, but I'm going to do it again this year. Uh, in fact, I have 20 this year. Uh, I make up uh, the best. Uh, my best flat earth videos and the best content I have and just about everything. I, and I put them on little uh, flash, uh, flash drives that I buy from Amazon. And so if anyone says, oh, how can I get in contact? Instead of a business card or whatever, it's like, here, take this. Here's a little four gig, eight gig flash drive. And they, they usually run with it. It's like, keep it. So, yeah, as time progresses, it's going to be uh, more difficult to kind of catch catch everything that you want to catch. Right. Uh, and that's one thing that people are saying, but I've been speaking at a bunch of conferences and that's just the reality, you know, as speakers, you know, you're going to be doing what you're doing and you could always capture it afterwards, but it's going to be hard to be able to right. take in everything. And, uh, again, I would say that for a lot of people, um, it's important to be, you know, talking with the community, meeting up with media. And so, yeah, you are going to miss out on things, but again, it will all be captured. We do have the live stream this year. We're doing something different, the paid live stream. We've got exclusive interviews. We got behind the scenes. We've got a really, really cool, uh, paid live stream, but 80% of the conference will be live streamed to YouTube for free. So we will have most of it on YouTube on the flat earth international conference, uh, YouTube channel, but the paid live stream, there's gonna be lots of extras and hopefully you'd like to support us that way. Cause it all, it really helps. There's, it takes a lot of money to put these on. That's for right. sure. But uh, we definitely want to make sure that people that don't even have the means, they're going to be able to enjoy it as well. Perfect. Wonderful. With that, let's segue into a few calls and see what we got out there. And just so you know, we're going to keep these a little shorter than usual because we have a guest on the line and I've only got them for the next 22 and a half minutes. So 
Let's go to 334 area code. You've been on the line for, wow, he's been on hold for 40 minutes. 334, are you there? What are we talking about? Hey, Mark, this is Carlos. How are you doing? I am doing well. How are you doing? Doing well, Robbie. How's it going? Remember me? (laughs) Oh, sorry. What was your name? Carlos, man. (laughs) Oh, yeah, Carlos. Of course I remember you, man. How are you doing? Doing well, yeah. um, I've met Robbie in the uh, Skyfall conference over here in Auburn, Mark. Oh, right on. That's why. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty good. Well, apparently apparently uh, Robbie Robbie brings some of his fans with him. So what's on your mind? Yeah. Ah, uh, nothing. Just calling in like I do every other week. Uh, I give you a hard time, but I won today because Robbie is there. So I'm just gonna say hi to you guys. <laughs> I appreciate that. Really? Thank you so much. You're gonna you're gonna hold back. Normally, you give me a hard time, I'm, and and you're gonna hold back because Robbie's here. <laughs> well, I don't I don't give you a hard time, but yeah, you know, we always call in and try to talk about something. But uh, I, I know. know. I just wanted to um, you know, say hi to you guys, and uh, I wish I could make it to the uh, uh, conference, but. I didn't have enough uh, vacation days and yeah. and time to go, but maybe it next happens. year. Yeah, yeah, the good news is I'll be announcing both Canada and USA 20, uh, FE 2019 at the end of this year's conference. So I'll be announcing the new venues and the new cities at the end of this year. So hopefully you can make it out to that. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, you guys are pretty fine people. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, still looking into you guys' uh, stuff. I've been reading some of the... Uh, the uh, the book that uh Nathan gave me yeah um so yeah I'm just uh just just riding along oh so you're so if I'm not mistaken that's that's right you're still he's you're on not, the fence yeah he's yeah. still on the fence you know what it's in your well, head I, it's only a matter of time I'm sorry <laughs> it's three it's, years it, man it's been three years so how long is it gonna take <laughs> I, you know what that is longer than me I only took nine months and I was one of the longer ones so you know what it'll probably you know in your case it'll probably take peer pressure which is you know when all when all of a sudden you are in the minority that's when you'll probably flip uh, that's my prediction anyway uh, so, the interesting well, thing the interesting right thing, man you, who knows the interesting thing that you brought up to me when we met uh, in Alabama was that you're careful what you teach your children because you don't want to teach them lies. I thought that was really profound and really honest of you. So I really appreciate just you being genuine and, and kind of approaching this topic and taking your time. Like I said, it, it's great. I wish you the best on that. Yeah, well, yeah, like I said, I, I, you know, I, I'm exposing them to all of this research that I'm doing and they're looking and asking. And I said, well, I mean, you know, if I'm 99% sure uh, you know, I'm going to leave room for that 1% and say, well, the, here here are the two theories, and this is what the mainstream, and, and I ask them, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to indoctrinate my kids. That's great. Uh, so. That's great. All right. Well, cool, <laughs> awesome. man. But anyway, uh, good talking to you guys. All right. Yeah. Hey, you have a good rest of your evening. We'll, uh, we'll talk again undoubtedly soon, probably next week. Excellent. Talk to you later. Well, have a good night. Blessings to you. Yeah. All right, let's jump right over to 651 area code. 651, you're on with Robbie Davidson in Strange World. What is happening? Why are you following me? And why don't you want to be Shrek? I like being me. <sighs> Wes, why do you insist on Do you know the rules, okay? First off, you, you have to call close to when the, the station break is. And two, you don't call in when guests are. It's kind of like walking in front of my house when, when, you ha- when I have a Those party. Are written. It's all good. Wes yeah. gets a pass. It's Wes. <laughs> They're written. They're written in, in gold, I think. Yeah. Uh, what's so up? how are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm awesome. doing well. <laughs> what's, hap- what's happening with you, Wes? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I I been working really hard last week. And. I, I had no sooner came in the door five o'clock in the eve oh, five thirty in the evening, closed my eyes for two seconds and didn't wake up till two in the morning. So that's why I missed calling in last week. Oh well that's okay. You'll get a chance yeah. to call in next week. Yeah. Mark's like, I didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> no. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that about you as far as you know. Mark What's actually so- called me, Wes, and he was crying that you didn't call in. He was actually his feelings were really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Wes, okay. imagine Wes the has a horrible habit of sending me hangouts, hangout requests at the worst time, it's with no advance notice. Normally, it's like, hey, you know, I'm doing a hangout in 45 minutes. No, Wes is like, I'm doing a hangout now. 
Come in. That's now, right now. <laughs> what, am I, what am I supposed to do? Just drop everything that I'm doing? I, you know, I, I tend to be a little busy. Made a few videos, you know, doing. No, no, no. Things. You know what? I, truth be told, I send it to you. I send it to Patricia. I send it to a whole bunch of people. And I always put down in a little description, if you can make it, great. So, so it's kind of a free for all. Your, your comeback is, 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 okay. Your comeback is, okay, Mark, you're not that special. Oh, that's awesome. Seriously. Way to, way to tear me down. So speaking of making I it, are you going to, are you going to make it to the conference, so, Wes? But Wes, I don't think he's going to make you know, it. Just, You're not going to make it, are you, Wes? Just, just to tear Mark down, I just may make it. Oh, just no. To, oh, just put him down no, no, a no, little no, bit no. further. No, I wouldn't do that. I you, I am not going to have you lurking in the background. Well, uh, no, it'd be <laughs> honestly, it'd be fantastic if you went. I mean, yeah. I mean, you are loved and yet loathed just about everywhere you go mm-hmm. in Flat Earth. So it'd be wonderful you showed up. I'll be walking around with a pole that says 500 feet and I'll just be touching Mark <laughs> on his back. Hey, see, not touching you. you know. I'm glad you remember the restraining order that it really, it, it yeah. touches, it touches my heart. All right, Wes, I, I, I want to pick up a few more calls. Any, anything else? You no, want that's to? fine. You go ahead. Are you sure? Shout out to everybody in the chat. Later, later. Okay. Let, would great to see you there, Wes. If you come, if you can come. All right, later. Okay, see ya. Later. All right, let's jump over to 203 area code. 203, you're on with Robbie Davidson and Strange World. What's happening? Hi, Robbie. This is uh, Zerla from the chat room. Hey, sorry, who is this? Can you hear me? This is uh, Zerla from the chat room. Zerlak. Zerlak. Okay, I'm not in the chat Zer- room right Zer- now. Zer- 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 you'll see, I have a few posts that I had in there. And I wanted to tell you that because I was going to send over a a picture um i wanted to say that i was listening to a prior uh, to the guest like two hours ago and i think it was the other show or maybe it was your show i wasn't sure okay um and he was talking about how he laser leveled the ocean i was looking for information on the laser level thing i'm coming from a skeptic's point of view but i'm open-minded because i'm no bigot so um i gotta look into his laser level thing because that answered a couple of questions for me that persuades me towards flat earth Okay. However, um, I have listened to um, a lot of work from uh, a man who passed away who's done a lot of great research called Lloyd Pye, and I saw in one of his videos, um, his most famous one, which is Everything You Know is a Lie, mm-hmm. um, this particular picture of the Earth, uh, which is topographical, and the point being is, is that Earth, unlike the other planets in the solar system, is actually a lumpy rock. It's not a, a, a rock-like sphere. Mm-hmm. It's got deep, deep crevices of the Earth itself, and then there's the water. Now, water always comes to level. Mm-hmm. So it's not that we are round when you get down to what's physical and liquid about the planet, right. but that where the water is on the Earth would actually be level from coast to coast across the ocean. Okay. And then there's opposite sides of the planet. An answer to that would get me almost convinced of flat. All right. All right. I'll tell you what. Do do this for me because I don't know if you are familiar with the FE core experiment that they did out at Lake Balaton with the Guinness Book of World Records. But I have got the whole 100-page breakdown of that that I, I can email to you in like two seconds. If did, Do you know how to get to my email address, or you want me to rattle it off real quick? What's that? Um, uh, yeah, uh, rattle it off real quick, or maybe put it in the chat or something. I'm so it, it's, you, you can, it's The email address <laughs> is literally in the description box of every single video I make. Uh, it's msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Uh, the Lake Balaton experiment is is by far and away the most detailed thing I've ever seen. It is not light reading, but it is extremely precise. Where they shot forty plus kilometers up in uh, Hungary at, at Lake Balaton, B A L A T O N. It is a fan, and you can also YouTube that if you wanted to. Uh, it's it's a great great thing. That's what I would point to first if you're going to look at laser laser level experiments that are shot over water. That's that's what I would yeah. go to. Okay. All right. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Cool. Great. Uh, do do that if you get a chance. Unfortunately, I do have to take some other callers, but thank you, thank you for reaching out. Okay. 
Yeah, sure, sure. And, and please let me uh, and please let me know what your answers are. Maybe in the future, you okay. put it on the air or whatever about this lumper thing that I just presented. Thank Got you so it. much. We'll we'll address it. Okay, talk to you soon. All right, let's jump over to three o four area code three o four. You're on with Strange World and Robbie Davidson. Hey, Mark and Robbie, how you doing, fellas? Good man, how you doing? Doing What's... great. And just quick question. Well, you you already answered my question, and Mark stole my other one. So, <laughs> but the live streaming. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you uh, one about, I guess, uh, Mark's favorite, uh, you know, thing, Space Force. What do you think about Space Force? Uh, Space Force. Okay, Space Force. Here, the, there's a couple problems with it. Uh, the biggest is, from an American standpoint, uh, is that it takes away all the recruiting air out of the sails. So if you think of all the the other, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, right? They have a really tough time recruiting. It's it's gotten tough, uh, tougher and tougher over the years. All of a sudden, you introduce this new shiny thing called Space Force, and and because of the movies we've had over the years, uh, two that come to mind would be Starship Troopers and Aliens from 1986, where you've got a Marine force that's set in space. It's it's sorry. It's too cool to pass up. No one is going to enroll in anything else. So to create a space force, I mean, yeah, you can sink some money into the concept, but once you start recruiting the other branches, which are it just entrenched. I mean, they've been around oh, I don't know, forever. They're not. They're just not going to let it happen. So I I just don't think there's going to be any future in space force. So uh, you can talk about it all you want, but uh, let okay. Let me let me let me summarize up summarize it with this. If Elon Musk would have mentioned Space Force, it wouldn't have surprised me. That that's the sort of title that's being thrown out there. The fact that Donald Trump is talking about, ugh, I I don't want to know. Space Force is I I do not have high confidence in it at all. Uh, if they want to use it to siphon some money off some stuff, fine. But the recruitment process will be a nightmare. So no. Yeah, it can't it can't happen because there's no space. Yeah, well, they, of course. <laughs> yeah, there's the logistical exactly. side of it too. Yeah, yeah. But heck, I'd sign that's up. That's why I, I, I agree. I agree with that. But that's why I think Trump may be a flat earth in the closet, where he's trying to, you know, kick now, NASA to the curb. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me Maybe. let me do one more qualifier for you, which is there's one instance where Space Force could actually be a reality, and that is if there was some perceived real tangible threat from fake space to, to steal from Robbie. Yeah. Uh, if, if fake space all of a sudden conjured up uh, some sort of alien thing, yeah, it'd be like Pearl Harbor. A million people would sign up for Space Force tomorrow and then they would, uh, everyone would start buying DVD copies of Starship Troopers. So that would be the only instance where Space Force could be a reality. Everything else is just a pipe dream. All right. there, there you go. All right. So. Ro- Robbie, you think anything about that or? Yeah, I mean, I agree it, with the way, same thing. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of set up in such a way. For me personally, I think that Trump really wants to be recognized as a, as a great president. And again, I'm not anti-Trump whatsoever, but I think that even Trump, even the presidents don't really understand. They don't know the truth. I mean, presidents don't go to space. So the idea that they're in on this or they would know, I really don't think so. I just think that he wants to create something because, like Mark said, it would be the coolest, hippest thing ever, and he can be responsible for it, right? So it makes him kind of cool that he created it. In the same way that he wants to go back to the moon, I think he wants to have another amazing historic achievement on his watch. I think that's what drives Trump. I do definitely, you know, I definitely think that there's factors there. But the whole Space Force thing, getting into the alien agenda, I take the personal take that it's going to be more of a benevolent, you know, uh, coming to us in peace more than you know hostile but again i just think it's nothing but propaganda getting people loving space even more than they have and again it's nothing more than continuing the paradigm yeah agreed oh yeah agreed. oh yeah i agree well, thank you thank you guys all right hey you uh, uh hey, the next one. Come on. hey i'm sorry anything else no that's it i'm just gonna let the next guy come in or, or girl all right, come cool. on in. all right hey you have a good okay. one all right see ya take care man all right, let's grab 408. 408, you were on with Strange World. Are you or are you not in California right now? I am in California right now. Right on. What are we talking about? Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> it, 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 I'm on a radio right now, Lisa. Come on. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I got lazy the other day. Okay. I wanted to find my Pythagorean chart of uh like the curvature of the earth sure 
I got lazy. So I punched it into Google. Instead of finding it on my computer, I punched it into Google. Okay. And there was some guy named Jackie or something. And he, 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 it was the first result was, you know, the math, these flat earthers, the math is all off. Right. And then and, and he broke it down and he said, well, they're good for the first thousand miles. Oh, but yes. Then that... After a thousand miles. Right. Then the, oh, are you kidding me? A yeah. thousand miles, the curvature of the earth, thousand miles, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I use yeah, word? you probably, probably shouldn't use the Lord's name in vain. Um, and, and you're absolutely right, by the way. I, 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 it's something we don't really cover here that often, but it's true. The curvature of the earth formula after the first thousand miles has to take in some special equations to account for, if you believe in mainstream science, the 8,000 mile, give or take, uh, width of the earth. But yeah, up until the first thousand miles, it, honestly, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, we're, we're only shooting the long distance photography that we're shooting right now, although the infrared is pretty compelling, uh, is about, I think oh it caps out God. at about 500 miles. So yeah, anyone that says that yeah the math is wrong, they're 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 grasping at straws. It's like we don't care usually what happens at, after a thousand miles because no one's shooting that far. Again, with the exception of the no, guy. No, and, and, and like, wouldn't a thousand miles demonstrate the the fact that there? No, Absolutely. Absolutely. The the infrared po- uh, photography that's being done by uh, Jay Tolan Media One on YouTube is unbelievable. I mean, he's shooting at 30,000 feet, which gets you at a nice vantage point, and the atmosphere is, is a lot thinner at, at that at that height. But he's, I, I got to tell you, there's some of the stuff he's pointing out, and he's very, very detailed in the Google Earth references. He's, he is seeing some stuff at 1,000 miles, and you're saying, well, 30,000 feet, you should be able to see it very far. I'm going, not that far. 1,000 miles is a long, long way, my friends. Very, very long. I mean, long, it's the, long, even right. at a hundred, even at a hundred miles, I think it's like over a mile below the curvature of the earth at a hundred right. miles. Yeah. So, I mean, you're talking, I mean, think of a mile in the air, how high that is. Right. So yeah, I mean, no, we shouldn't be able to see as far as we're seeing. And that's one of the strongest proofs. Yeah. Yeah. So any, anything else I can do for you along those lines, or do you want to continue with, I I'm gathering that you may have started happy hour around five 30. Is that, is that what yes. happened out there? Yes, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, I, it's I did. just a guess. But, Shot in the but, dark, but, really. The thing is, man, <laughs> the, the, the thing is, it's like I called in and I told you about this thousand mile thing. Yeah. Yeah. My name's Nick. Hi, Nick. I can actually I'm see you on the, on the call board. It, it's, yeah, I, I see your name. Nick from SN. What, what's the abbreviation for SNJS West? What city what? is that? What, what city? What city are you in in California? Santa Clara. Oh yeah, yeah that's fine. that's close. Santa. I don't know what J stands for, but whatever. Anyway, San I San Joaquin, to... maybe. I don't. Yeah, know. you know what? That's, but, prob- um, that's probably. Listen, a... dude. What? You are the shit. You oh, man. I don't, I don't know. You don't you pronounce are... the J, Mark. You no, don't pronounce I'm the J. Sorry, I just did that again. But I, I'm telling you what. <laughs> I was lucky. I'm your, I'm a big fan. Oh, well, that's awfully nice. Uh, And thank you. Thank you for calling in. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to wrap up with Robbie because we've got some, we 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 got to recap the conference. So, but anyway, before, before I let you go, I, I have to ask just for the listeners out there, what is your drink of choice right now? Tequila. Right on. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course All right, man. Yes, hey, we, we will talk right. soon. <laughs> and just like that, he was gone. But Nick, I'm not going to forget about you. I swear the next time I see you on the call board, you're not being answered anywhere close to first. Anyway, Robbie, we're going to talk for the, the last three minutes of this segment, uh, sure. just kind of recapping. <laughs> What's about the conference in general? Anything? Uh, let, let's let's run it down. So if people want to, they if they it's like okay, you know what? I'm gonna go to the conference. What are their options right now? You got VIP, you got general admission, you got streaming. What do you got? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And you can go to fe2018.com and you'll see all the information you need as far as tickets, speakers, schedule. 
Um, if you're interested in becoming an exhibitor, again, it's getting really close down to uh, showtime. But right. again, there definitely is room, and we'd love to have you down. It is going to be epic, and I don't mean that, and that's not an understatement. It's definitely going to be epic. Oh, I, I, I can it's imagine. It's going to be great. I can't wait. I'm, I'm <laughs> excited. That? I'm going to be there a whole week, so it's just uh, it's going to be really exciting to, to see it all come together. It's, There's a lot of people involved uh, getting all the, the stuff together this year. It's going to be at the Crown Plaza. Uh, near the airport? Yeah, the airport convention center uh, near the airport. Yep. And, uh, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I because I, I called the hotel because I wasn't going to rent a car for this. And there's shuttles there's running shuttle. pretty you much on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, dress appropriately because it is going to, you know, check. I don't normally recommend this to people, but Denver weather is completely up in the air. So check the weather before you come out there. Uh, it's sometimes it's very, very nice. Uh, the one thing I will say is the Denver weather isn't like the West Coast or East Coast. They are pretty spot on. I've never up in the Northwest up here. We always joked is like the weathermen never know anything. They always say partly cloudy or partly sunny with scattered showers just to cover their ass. But in Denver, it's like, no, the snow will be here in exactly five hours. Oh, They're, another thing I should mention too. We got the billboard meetup on Wednesday at 3 right. p.m. So the right. big billboard went up, uh, arranged by David Weiss, deep inside the rabbit hole. And we're meeting at 3 p.m. There's also the VIP speaker reception mixer taking place at 7:30 that evening. That's on the Wednesday before the conference. But as well, early registration. I strongly advise if you're there early. Go to early registration at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. This would be the 14th because, like I said, the next morning it's going to be mayhem and you can get all your stuff early, your badge and all the other goodies that come along with uh, registration for Flat Earth International Conference 2018 USA. Perfect. And with 45 seconds left, what's, uh, and there's going to be an event on Saturday as well. So yes. the Go ahead. Correct. There's going to be a big get together at a bar in Denver. The details, Bob Nodell is kind of putting it all together. I forget the name of the bar offhand, but it will be listed on the website here in the next day or two. All the information for the get together on Saturday. And that will be nice. It'll be at post conference. We'll be able to relax. There's going to be karaoke. I think Flat Earth Man's going to be performing there as well as some other artists. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So get wow. ready for four solid days of a ton of stuff going on from the billboard right to the uh, post conference party at the bar down i think it's near somewhere near downtown denver awesome and with 10 seconds left i'd like to thank robbie davidson for coming and promoting the conference because i am going and everybody i know is going so don't miss it thank you very much robbie thank you so much for having me all right we'll come back in three minutes Real people, real radio. Wherever you are, make it TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. We just spent the last hour with Robbie Davidson from Celebrate Truth. Before that, uh, the three-hour Justin Bieber wine thon And before that was the Taylor Swift Hour of Power. But yeah, just then, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. And no, Peanut Gallery, I haven't stopped looking at the chat because you never stop sending me stuff. Peanut Gallery is like my my silent little producer that just puts this bug in my ear all the time. And I remember, I don't say about 90% of what he's, he's throwing at me. He's throwing me stuff all the time. You know what? I should. I am going to pick up some calls. I'm going to pick up 905 and 208 next. Uh, and thank you, Nick, by the way, from California, who's still on there. Uh, although I don't think I'm going to pick you up uh, soon. There was a quote I was supposed to leave for Wes, and I forgot about this. It was called, it goes exactly like this. Don't invite annoying. 
<laughs> it's funny. I hadn't read it till just now. Don't invite annoying people into your life and set ground rules for the one, the ones you inherited. That's from Alan Robert Neal. That's awesome. That's really, really great. <laughs> it's perfect for Wes. Uh, seriously, I don't like Wes very much. Okay, let's go 905 area code. 905, you're on with Strange World right now. Hey, hey, Mark. How you doing? I'm sorry. Who is this? It's uh, Brian from Niagara Falls or wow. Junior Sugarbush 905. Really? really? You, yeah. You just, you just bit on that because I don't see all that information in front of me right now, including the drone oh, strike. You know the drone strike coordinates it's right there and uh <laughs> they're out of they're out of missiles oh man uh, i figured you picked up wes so you're gonna probably pick me up too and yeah that's true so uh what's going on <laughs> uh not much i just wanted to uh save robbie the the hassle of the call so shout out to oh robbie. because you call you call in when robbie's on other things uh, well, I caught him on Paul on the plane, which I didn't call in today because uh, he had a, a guest. But um, oh, it was a, I have haven't a pre- actually called. Do you have a pre-record or is Sorry? it just a guest? Honestly, I don't know. Mm. I uh, I got it, there late. I think it, I think it was a rerun. To be honest, either way, it was a good conversation. Oh, good, good. But uh, yeah, so uh, the one TFR. Uh, host I haven't called yet yeah. is Rob Skiba. So oh, uh, cool. you know your slide for the day that you ruined his life. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I, would be know, that's a, that's uh, a last cop Wednesday. out that he throws. He throws. He throws me under the bus deliberately, and that's basically his little disclaimer. And that is, in case it all goes bad, it's Mark's fault. It's like great. That's what. That's why he does it. It's like okay, in case something really goes bad, and all of a sudden somebody discovers the curve, which will never happen. You know, it's like, oh no, don't! You know, I was only ninety nine percent flat Earth. It was that Mark guy? <laughs> yeah. But you're gonna get a second slide now. The day that Ginger starts calling. <laughs> yeah. 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 There is that. Uh, did uh, Did you happen to catch Jaren's uh, short clip with uh, Iru? Uh, that he did about the green screen? Mm, no. No, I haven't heard that one yet. Oh, it's so good. Uh, Eero talks about uh, the technology from uh, just like a couple years back, and it totally shows how you can uh, have a bigger area that's not actually on screen. Right. And do you remember that astronaut that hung the right-hand corner and just like phased out or uh disappeared yeah uh it shows the exact same thing but in like uh somebody's kitchen or uh living room mm-hmm. it's uh pretty much dead on to how they could fake the uh the green screen and it's yeah uh, yeah check out i i think the the production value of the iss is just too bold they were the stuff they were doing was just too aggressive. I, I look, I understand that you know it's it's always a great uh, PR thing to have astronauts talk to school children. I get that. But at the same time, if that means you have to do live production techniques that it, it, look, ask anybody in Hollywood. It's why you don't do live stuff anymore. You just can't do it. Uh, there's there's too many things that can go wrong. So if it was me, I'm sorry, if it was my, project if it was my program to run i would i would have from day one of course you can't do it now because once you do it in the beginning you always are going to do it uh but i would say that there was some technical issue too much lag or a distance thing or whatever it was something that would stop you from talking to school children although you know what now that i say that statement it was always going to have to be that way because you had people the president talking to the apollo astronauts and if the president could talk to the Apollo astronauts in the early 1970s, you have no excuse in the 1990s. So yeah, that's yeah, absolutely whatever. true. Yeah. Anyway, even though um, they go dark for 40 minutes, well, there's that. Yeah, for 20 minutes every hour. I, right. uh, uh, Peanut Gallery, by the way, mentions and, that, that Bill O'Reilly would do it live. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> I get that. Unfortunately, Bill isn't on the air anymore. Oh, so sad. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, anything uh, uh, else? Right. Because I, I do have a couple calls I got to pick up. Yep. No worries, Mark. Uh, pick up the next guy. Uh, right. Thanks for picking up, uh, hey. Michael. And it, uh, it is always we'll, uh, good. we'll talk to you later. Yeah, yeah. Always good to talk to you, man. All right. Have a good night. All right. See ya. All right. Let's pick up uh, 208. 208, you're on live with Strange World. What's happening? Mark, what up? What is crack a lacking? That's me. Not much, man. <laughs> Chilling up here in Star Idaho. Thought I'd give you a ring. Hey. Well, I'm here. What? Yeah. Uh, did you? Were you listening to the show? Were you, you listening to Robbie do his spiel? Yeah, listen to the show. Thought I'd give you a little flat Earth clue. Oh, what do you got? Well, the last guy, not the last guy, but the guy before that named Nick. <laughs> yeah, Nick, who was pounding the tequila like he was buying it two for uh, four dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I recognize his voice, and that guy's the best living guitar player on the planet. Nick? Wait, who is he? Do I know Nick? Uh, I don't know. His last name could could uh, be Van Halen. No, seriously, who is who is? Could be man. Who, who is Nick? Is, I mean, is Nick a celebrity? He's your, he's your fan now. He's he's your big time fan. Nick, who drinks a lot of tequila and calls into the show. I feel yeah. bad. I feel bad if I gave him yeah. uh, uh, grief, but at the same time, I try to treat everybody the same. And he was, ah, he, he, he did have a lot of tequila. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, yeah. one other uh, quick quick thing on the Bible. Yeah. Just figure figured out last night why they're uh, always trying to prove it wrong and you know say we're from monkeys and all that because they know it's uh, true and it's the number one flat Earth book. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the old joke. The comedians have said this for a while, and that is, we evolved from monkeys, but there are still monkeys. So exactly. what what happened? What happened to the? Why aren't those monkeys? Why are they still monkeys? Basically, did they evolve from something yep. else? Where this this giant chain of evolution? Uh, I'm not buying it because there's a lot, of, man. yeah, a lot of different. Yeah, and it is a flat Earth book. I'd like to make a quick comment on that, and that is to any pastors or um, heavy spiritual types out there, you got to understand the dilemma that's happening, uh, especially in the Christian world, which is. The only verse, literally the only verse they can hold on to is Isaiah 40, 22, which is he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And there are entire congregations are holding on to that like it has veto power over basically the rest of it, every uh, including Genesis. It's like, I'm sorry, how does Isaiah trump Genesis? Eh, don't don't see it. Not not seeing it. So eventually, look, religion's all about taking a leap of faith. And this, I think, works a lot in their favor. Look, you want you want you want to take science head on. You're gonna need this. But anyway, right on, bro. Hey, man, you rock. You All right, rock man. On the flat Earth, baby. That's why hey. you got rock stars calling in. <laughs> right on. Well, I'm, I I hope you, you one got day you got another with... one calling in right now, uh, but just not yet. I haven't made it that status yet. So oh, right on, man. Well, thank you. It is appreciated. And uh, hey, you have a good night. Okay. All right, man. See ya. Right. See ya. Okay, let's find out who's on eight one five. Eight one five. You are unmuted and talking hey, to. Hey, buddy. Me. How you doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> And you got some trips on tonight. I know. I know. Yeah, it's, baby it's, it's, shit. I mean, there's a slider for LSD. <laughs> be, be, hey, go. you know what's on the third one, dude? You know what got me going? We got to buy one. The guy on there is like, dude, it's only $50,000 to do this. I go, shit, let's go. You can pay it or whatever. Can, the can hold you hear like me? Grand, I, I, I don't know if you could hear me or not. It sounded like he was playing a recording. Try calling back. Uh, anyway, let's move on to 651. 651 area code. What's happening? Hey, Mark. Long time caller, first time listener. Thanks for taking my call again. Uh, yes. I, I. How are you? And how's, how's your activism um, going? I'm, I'm doing well. Thanks a lot. Um, I'm really uh, just really encouraged by the Commonwealth of Flat Earth to 
really give me the privilege to come out and shake your hand in Denver, Colorado, and stand on my tippy toes and shake Robbie Davidson's hand. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's I'm, tall. I'm just, uh, he's, he's yeah, tall. I'm really, I'm really just overwhelmed with that, and I really appreciate it. Oh, well, again, man, it's, it, I mean, this is what kind of we've been leading up to, which is if you, you know, you've been out there, you've, you've been dealing with the people, uh, the flat earth regional meetups have been fantastic and every conference and every event, the energy is just off the charts. And, you know, if, if you come there, you know, seek me out, I'll look for you. And, uh, you won't again, like everybody else, you won't sleep. It's just, it's such a great time. It's, it's, it's not just a party. It's, it's kind of like a. Oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like being with a brand new family and you don't want it to leave. I mean, people, people were talking about last year, you know, they're still talking about Raleigh and it's like, Oh, right on. I get to meet everybody and they're coming twice as long as they did beforehand. So can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, I, I heard you guys talking about this is really the coming out party, if you will. And, yeah. you know, when you think about the turn of the, the century, y2k and everything and people were like wait a second but it's not really y2k because the next year 2001 is really when 2000 starts right so yeah we give it another year and we have so many more people out there talking to the public really challenging the laws that are out there regarding free speech what is and what isn't private property and i think this is kind of a tester feeler type of thing to where we're able to gauge whether people are ready for this or not and whether they are or not, right. Truth is going to overcome, right. But we have to just continue to keep pressing forward, get more people comfortable with talking to people who are complete strangers on the street. And I love the paraphernalia that I've gotten from other people. Nice. Um, Flattered vegans, Jim Lotus, uh, the shout outs that I get in Chicago by uh, flat earth activism that's going on out there. And I really think that if we show the public that this is an important issue, I'm going to come out to the street and talk to you face to face rather than sit at home and yeah. keep will worry it up or watch TV. I think that's going to really affect people's. I, I whole, wholly agree with you, um, which is why I was such a huge fan and, and just can't can't believe that the uh, UK tour, you know, the the van that they're driving around over in, in London and the UK was, you know, they've been doing it for 90 days and, you know, not they did not stop. They're going to make it. They're going to make it to this weekend and, you know, have the big event and, and get out and, and do the big victory speeches and that everybody is doing activism and you're right. There's not as many as, as there should be, but at the same time, activism isn't for everybody, but the ones that are doing it and posting it online, kudos to you. And uh, it's, it helps every, every little bit helps. Exactly. Yeah. I think that activism gives people that measure of what they're comfortable with. And right. talking to strangers face to face out in, on public property, maybe with or without a camera, it is kind of the ultimate uh, test on your own personal comfortability, you know, what you're comfortable with. Right. And if you can teeter that down, you know, shoot for the stars and land in the trees, right? Land in the clouds. Ah. You know, get out there and do something. And whatever it is that you feel comfortable doing, leave a card behind when you're tip your waitress. Right. You know, um, wear a T-shirt around. You don't have to expect a conversation. You know, that's the great thing. Let the t-shirt, let the card do the talking. It, you know, I have you, ODD, and Eric Dubay on the card that I hand out to everybody. Nice. Not because I know you and I have opinions about you, but because mm-hmm. you guys provide information that then can lead people to where I'm at. You know, right. um, I, I just heard Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs. And it's not going to do, you know, it's not going to lead everybody to going out and talking to strangers out in public, but it certainly will press upon your heart a little bit and say, gosh, I got to let somebody know about this. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, well, the weight of the topic really just presses forward, regardless who you hear it from. Once people, and you've seen this, you know, once people get inspired, the enthusiasm level goes off the charts. And some people create YouTube channels for the very first time and make videos. Some people go out and do activism. Uh, some people go in and do a ton of research, you know, as far as like, do they do tests? It takes different forms, but. I uh, just know that when you're out there and you put that, like you said, you know, leave a card, you know, whenever, whenever you get a chance to go out in public, try to spread the message. Uh, you know, I've got a flat earth license plate on my car. Uh, even when I game, you know, during the rare moments where I have free time, uh, you know, my, my guild is called flat earth. Uh, every chance I get, you know, I, I'm putting the message out there, even if it's just planting the seed, because that's really all you have to do. You, people forget, you don't have to convince them right then and there. All you have to do is get them thinking about it and then let it blossom. You know, just walk away. It's like this little, little, little time bomb in their head. Yeah. It's a little inception. It's a, yeah, exactly. It's it is. A, inception. It's like the movie. It is. It is really because a lot of people, they don't even think about it for months and then they come back to it and they think that they're the ones that came up with the idea to look in the first place. Right. And it's like, right. no, this, this is from six months ago, a year ago when you were, mocking and ridiculing that guy holding a sign in a lab coat. Yeah. You know, at, at a lake. And I'm, I'm, you know, that's I'm, great. Yeah. I'm waiting for one day where, uh, where it comes full circle. I've, I'm sitting next to somebody and, and they'll look at me like, yeah, man, you, you in the flat earth. And I go, uh, you know, I've heard about it. You know, I'll play coy. It's like, yeah, this flat earth clues thing. You got to check it out. It's like, really? Sounds interesting. <laughs> it's like, waiting, waiting for that day. I know it's going to come too. And it'd be like, yeah. And I won't, I won't give it up. I'll, I'll be like, yeah, thanks, man. I'll let him walk away. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. And then just, yeah, uh, yeah if you can only be around. So get a pen and paper. I, I just want to leave everybody with this real quick. Okay. Pen and paper or memorize it. Mm -hmm. So Star Trek back in the day, uh, James T. Kirk, Bill Shatner, before the moon landing, all 79 episodes of that series were released. Before the moon landing, okay? Yeah. So, episode 8, season 3, fascinating episode. Check, you got to If you're a flat earther, you got to watch Star Trek season 3, episode 8. Do you remember and the then, name? Do you remember the, the name Earth, of the episode? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, it's called the, it's called the hollow earth or something. I'm not even oh, kidding you. It really says, I think the hollow something. Okay. And then after that, watch the Orville with Seth McFarlane, family guy. He has a, a show that's almost based exactly off of star Trek. Right. Uh, season one, episode four. I've watched that one. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, then, then you got to watch the star Trek episode. Okay. I'll check it out. That was in I 1969 when they were talking it, about that. I probably, I probably seen it, but yeah, the Orville that was a dead giveaway, and they were flying through a giant, oh. basically a giant um, terrarium slash planetarium. I mean, the the thing was a, a giant floating flat enclosed flat Earth world that was disguised. And then as they a, opened the convertible at the end, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was an interesting, right? interesting yeah. Uh, show, and I, I and yeah, many people have have shot that thing to me, but yeah, it's great reference um anyway man I, yeah. I want to pick up one more call before we end this so but thank you thank you for reaching out and i'm doing i'm doing a show next week but i'm flying out obviously to the conference the week after that so it'll be a rerun uh so if you're around uh call in but otherwise i will see you uh a week from tuesday can't wait i cannot wait guys i cannot wait <laughs> awesome all right man have Cheers. a good one talk soon Cheers. Bye-bye. All right. Will the last call of the night be 951? Let's find out. All right, 951. Are you there? Yeah, what's up, man? How's it going? Yeah, I talk closer to the mic, man. Don't you put me on speakerphone. <laughs> what's up, dude? <laughs> what's going on out in California? Uh, nothing much. It's, yeah. uh, yeah, it's starting to get kind of chilly here at night. It's kind of cool. Well, that's good. Well, I mean, it is almost November, November in two days. So you doing anything, yeah, well, anything fun for Halloween tomorrow? I don't touch Halloween, man. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yeah. It's like, 
asking a Jew to celebrate the Holocaust. Mm. Yeah, I've heard that. I mean, you know, if you're up in Detroit, they all then not only do they have Halloween, but they have Devil's Night, which was talked about in the movie The Crow, which is uh, tonight, actually. Wow. I know. They burn things yeah, down. I, just, I a find of, it a lot of fires set the day before Halloween. I find it interesting when I see uh, like Halloween trunk parties and stuff like that in church parking lots. It's just like okay. I don't get it, but whatever. <clears throat> Free candy, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess. So I liked, by the way, you know, you saw that I reproduced the video that you guys, and I know it was a little while ago, but the uh, the beach test that you and um, and Sydney and everybody else that was that was Ty Wendell. And, and Wendell and, and Nathan, yeah. Yeah, what a fantastic test. Uh, you guys, the, yeah, the Monterey Bay, the Miri test, that yeah. was really cool. Blew me away. I mean, here I am yelling at National Geographic that you do not, the absolute last place you want to do the long distance photography test is during a warm day <laughs> in California, basically. And because there's, you, you're not going to be able to, you know, the distortion is going to be too much. And you guys figured it out with how much that mirror cost? $10. Uh, eight dollars actually, yeah. but yeah, yeah, eight dollars. And and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, uh, they figured out a way to punch through the distortion, which was ironically enough using the sunlight. You just take a mirror on the other side, and the sun is so bright that you could actually punch through the atmospheric, uh, you know, the, the atmospheric lensing, the Fata Morgana effect. And you know, people say, "Oh no, it's a mirage." Yeah. I'm going really because I don't know how you're going to claim that it's a mirage. That, that is punching in from literally sea level. I mean, the 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 bottom of that mirror was on the sand. That uh, was brilliant. Yeah, dude, Sydney was she, she had the mirror just resting on the sand. That was insane. You could actually see the line of light from the mirror at whatever yeah. direction it was pointed. Yeah. I yeah. uh, well, well. Oh, I've got to ask only this. people. People have asked me this, and I need to know before the show. We've got uh, about ninety seconds. Or the 120 seconds. What's um, who whose idea was it to to come up with a mirror? I need I need names. Who 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 came up with this? Oh, we did the mirror first at the Salt and Sea. Uh, Wendell. Wendell said, "What? Just grab a mirror from Target and take it to the beach." Yeah, we went to the Salt and Sea for. Well, he okay. So he added the mirror to a laser test we were already going to do. He was like, "Hey, why not try this while it's daylight?" You know, and so we did. And it worked perfectly across the Salton Sea. Oh, here's another thing about the Salton Sea, dude. Yeah. How they were talking about distortion, refraction, and all that crap. Right. There's actually a scientific paper that tells that there is no refraction at the Salton Sea because it's salt water because of the salt water uh, content. It That's actually takes away the rest, so they can't even use refraction. They so all their because the salt, the salt content is so high that the refraction is minimized. It's yeah, it's higher than the ocean. Actually, it's more saltier than the ocean. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean, the ocean, uh, for those of you who don't know, is only about three percent salt solution, and the salt and sea is ridiculous. And yet, there's still fish in there. <laughs> That's what kills me. So, but they're dying. They yeah. were, we, and we know they're dying because of how bad it smelled while we were there. That was so horrible. I know. I know. Uh, they're actually talking about going back to oh, who? I don't want to go back to the Salton Sea. Who? Nathan, Nathan I did and find out. And Sydney and yeah, Nathan Wendell. and Wendell and everyone. Guys, they were talking what, about what going else back you, out again. Look, pick a different body of water. You guys have already done so much of the Salton Sea, and it's a horrible place. And the uh, Monterey Bay thing was brilliant. Uh, pick something else. Gotta be something. Pick a pick a freshwater lake somewhere off outside of the city. That's what I would. I do. know we could go to like Big Bear or something. There you but go. Nobody Big wants Bear. to do it. Nobody wants to do it near L.A. because they're worried about. I don't understand why they're worried about it. They're worried about like uh, the pollution distorting stuff or whatever. I don't know. Hmm. But hey, you know what? I can see. I can see where that could be a problem. Hmm. Uh, I like Monterey Bay. Monterey Bay was gorgeous yeah and the town around it was just really awesome it felt it was really fun being up there yeah beautiful uh, hey, the Salton, 
we got 20 seconds to the music. I'm sorry. I hate to do this to you. Um, no worries. So, so, so thank you. Thank you for calling in. Thank you to Robbie Davidson. Thank you for everybody else that called in. And next week, we are going to have a special Flat Earth guest who may or may not be from New York. Start spreading the news. I will be here next week. Same flat time, same flat channel. You guys come back.